Okay, so this is going to be a video on male fertility issues. We're going to talk about how you diagnose it, what might be the cause of it, how you might treat it. Uh, and then I'm going to do another video that's going to talk specifically about female infertility problems. All right, so, so you know, very typically what happens is, is you've tried to breed a dog, you're unsuccessful, and you wonder what the hell happened. And so one of the questions would be, is the male producing adequate um, and, as, and decent semen? So the first thing I say to that always is, if a dog has never been used before, somebody needs to evaluate his semen. Just, just to take it, just to still use it without evaluating is probably a mistake. So how do you evaluate it? Well, you can do this yourself. Uh, you can buy a graduated slide. You can buy one on Amazon for about 40 bucks. You need a microscope. And it's basically got an, an indentation it with some graduation lines. And you dilute the semen down, you count the number of semen in the various different squares. And, and from that, you can get an accurate count. So that, that's fine, you can do that. And I've done that many times myself. It's tedious, it takes you 10, 15 minutes to do it. The first time you do it, it'll take you probably an hour. Uh, but it's an inexpensive way that you can test semen yourself to make sure that, that uh, you've got a decent count. Um, of course, this requires you have a microscope. And honestly, if you're gonna do much, to do with dogs, you should definitely invest in a microscope. And I highly recommend that you buy a microscope with a, a, a color video screen on it. It's so much easier to use. Um, and you can buy one of those for on Amazon, um, 350 to 500 bucks. Um, the brand brand that I've got and I really like is a Celestron microscope. Um, the more money you spend, the higher the resolution, the higher the magnification, the bigger the screen. And you don't need anything over 600, so that's all you need in terms of magnification. And a bigger screen's nicer, but it's not critical. All right. So the, um, I forget the name of the slide. It's called a setometer, something like that. Anyway, uh, you, if you go look for microscope slide count blood on Amazon, you'll find it. All right. So what are you looking for in a semen, in a semen sample? Well, at least 200 million motile sperm of which their morphology, which means that the way they look is okay. They don't have two heads, they don't have crooked tails. You know, they look the way you would expect a semen to, uh, sperm to be and that they are getting good mo motility, which means that they're swimming nicely in one direction, not just spinning in circles. So you won't see them all doing that. You will see some in the sample that don't look right. And you'll see some that are dead and you'll see some that aren't going in a straight line. That's okay. We just want to see you know, a, a total of at least you know, 80, 90% of them look decent, and the total count is at least 200 million or more. Bigger dogs, bigger testicles, more semen, more, more sperm. Small dogs, like chihuahuas, less. So, uh, but for a Frenchie, 200 million, 200 million is a good starting point. You could get away with less. Uh, you know, if you're at 100 million, then I would recommend that a person doing us um, with 100 million, they make sure their timing is right on the money and probably do a surgical or transurgical insemination if the count is low. All right, so, so there's the first thing. Evaluate the semen to make sure that you've got a product that you can use. This just makes sense, doesn't it? Um, and then if you do enough of this, you'll be able to look at a drop of it under a microscope and get a really good feel for what it looks like. Because, you know, after you've done 50 of these, it's a, that bit looks terrible. Um, you will you get a <laughs> 18 wheeler here, the wheel looks pretty, pretty yeah, shaky. It's like, let me get by you before that blows out. Yeah, really, exactly. Um, yeah, so, you know, if you, if, if you collect from a dog and it's completely clear, I promise you, you've got a problem. It's not gonna look clear, it's gonna look milky. Now, when you collect from a dog, typically if you're shipping it, we, or, or we don't collect everything the dog can produce, we stop when it starts to go clear. We just want what's called a sperm refraction. Anyway, so, so the first thing is, an evaluation of the semen is critical towards being able to use a dog. Right. So if you're unsuccessful, and you do have decent semen, then typically the reason for a failure is three possible things. The most likely thing is you got the timing wrong. You didn't present, use the semen at the right time. The dog was either too early or too late. That's the most common cause for a problem. The second one would be that your technique needs some work. The semen has to stay in the dog. If you're putting semen into a dog as an artificial insemination and it all dripping out of the dog, minutes after you've done it, obviously that's not gonna be very effective. So technique, and I've got videos that talk specifically on how the technique, how you can do this yourself. But the technique's gotta be right. Um, and then of course the third thing is, is there may be a problem with the female. It may be that she's just not, you know, for whatever reason, 
and we'll talk about that in the next video, that she may not be capable of conceiving without some help, or which she may never have puppies. All right, so let's talk now about some specific problems and about what the fixes might be for those. So, one of the things that's gonna happen is you've got a dog that's in the house, the vet in the mail, and he's, somebody comes to the door, and the next thing you know, he's humping on their leg. And he's being scared down his a naughty boy. He's a naughty boy. And guess what you do? You scold him. You, 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 tell, him no. you tell him no, right? In a firm voice. Well, so the problem and here, the, the problem here is, is that you've now told this boy Oh, yeah. Not to do these things. And yeah. so when you want him to perform, he looks at you like he's about to get the no command or gonna get smacked or, or not treated in the way that he likes to be treated, which is loved by you. Two -legged people do the four -legged yeah, people. so so this is one of the problems with having a stud dog. So our dogs, our males, if they start humping anything, we don't discourage it at all. We might separate them because they're getting too um, over aggressive, and aggressive is not the right word, but too over insistent with the female, and the female doesn't want any part of it. And they had to learn, by the way, a, a stud dog that's used in a, in a frequent basis has to learn how to be a stud dog. It's not something that necessarily they yeah, pick up. Mayo, they yeah. Just you know why, yeah. I mean, if you look at our stud dogs, for instance, some of our older boys, they know exactly what's going on. They'll go up there and sniff on the girl and they'll decide whether she's ready or not. If they're not, they're not going to really waste their time versus a dog that's you know not even a year old yet but started his career he's all over anything that can move including me I mean, so there's there's a yeah he's like a teenager you know so so but the point here is is that you've got to reward the right behavior and if you if you um, reprimand the wrong behavior you can expect to have a dog that may not perform when you want to so this is this social issue to do with the way the dog is being brought up so You've got to, uh, for us, when we start a dog, uh, bouncing around now. Well, it's the wind. Oh, when we start a dog with its career, um, you know, we introduce it to a female dog that's in heat, um, and uh, we just kind of let him get the habit of sniffing around on her and seeing what he'll do. And then regardless of how he behaves, regardless of whether he produces or not, he gets a treat and he gets, a, you know, lots of loving. We, we want him, this to be an enjoyable experience that he wants to come back and do again, even if he wasn't successful. All right. So another thing that I see on this social aspect, so we're talking about shy dogs, the social aspect, is I see this a lot where somebody wants to use a stud dog, if they're at their dog, it's in the house, it runs around with all the other dogs. And then when they want it to perform, it doesn't want to do anything, it's not interested. And, and a lot of times it's because it's just too familiar with the females that's running around with it's like almost like brothers and sisters. So what do you do to separate? Yeah, there you go. So Tammy's got it right, exactly. So if you know that you're gonna use this boy, you've probably got a good idea that ten days beforehand your dog's in heat. The first thing to do is at least a week prior to using it, have a go. See if you'll predict quite from me. Don't expect him to produce the very first time the day that you absolutely need to use him because you've got a very, very good chance he won't perform for you. So you should have been practicing with this dog at least a week, if not months beforehand, to see whether he can produce what you want. Collect in a cup, look under a microscope if you've got one, throw it away. If he is running around with these females all the time, get him away from any female for at least 24 to 48 hours before you need to use him. And then the moment that you want to use him, get him in front of a female and immediately try to collect from him. Preferably a female that's in heat, but any female's better than none. So, too familiar, get him unfamiliar from for 48 hours, and you'll find that might make a huge difference. Absent makes the heart grow fun. That's right, exactly. That's and, what I do to James. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I shut him up in the closet. So, so the, so the other, just gonna keep on going. So the other thing about this is, and I forgot what I was going to say now. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. What was it? Something to do with this. No, it's escaping now. Um, Talking about separating. Yeah, right. Talking about separating. Yeah, so basically, you know, if, if, if they're around the same females all the time, separating. Them, do it. Okay. So, so that, now let's talk about some other... So that's the social issues. So now let's talk about... Um, You've done a collection, you've looked at it, and you've got a low sperm count. So what do you do? Well, 
The first thing is you may not be able to use it. Hopefully you've got a backup stud. If you're using our services, by the way, we evaluate semen. And if we've got a problem, we call you up and say, hey, this, this is not looking very good. We're gonna switch you to another dog. And, and by the way, when we do that, we switch you to a more expensive dog for the same price. We don't do a bait and switch and uh, charge you more money. We, uh, we, we realize that you want to get a dog pregnant and we want to be part of that process. So we do whatever we can to make sure that you're a happy customer. And we're in a good situation because we've got 23 studs. So if we've got a stud that doesn't want to perform that day, well, guess what? We've got a backup stud anyway. And I mean, if you look at blue dogs, I mean, we've got, I don't know, eight dogs that can produce blue, maybe more than that. Um, okay. So low sperm count, backup dog. Okay, so what do you do if the dog has a low sperm count? Well, the first thing is if it's been used a lot, frequently being used, that will absolutely be a cause for low sperm count. And I see a lot of this going on, not with us, but I see people who've got a stud dog that is in great demand, and I get reports back that they didn't have very much success, and probably the reason was the dog just got used too much. So I think that's a, a, something that you should ask if you're gonna do a, um, you should ask when was this dog last used to make sure that it wasn't used yesterday or the day before. You know, you wanna have a rest. So then the question is, what is acceptable in terms of using a dog? How often can you use a dog? Um, a good dog that's, that's mature, you know, a year and a half old or older, and is a decent, got decent, uh, decent sized testicles, uh, you can pull three times in a week and you can, and I never pull back well I do sometimes pull back to back but I don't want to pull back to back for different people so if, if you're using my dog on a Monday I probably want to you to use him again on a, two, on a Wednesday two days apart and then I want to have him arrest for a couple of days before somebody else gets to use him the semen that was used today gets replenished a week later in the dog so if you, I mean, a dog will produce for you, you can pull from a dog, you know, maybe every day of the week, but I promise you that the majority of dogs, after about three days of that, the semen count's not gonna be very good. And after four days of that, the semen count's gonna be a waste of time. So uh, you've gotta give, the, you've got to give the, the dog a chance to recover. Um, if you've got a dog with a low sperm count, and it's not because it's frequently used, it may be because it hasn't been used enough. So dogs that are young dogs or dogs that are old that haven't been used very much, they need to be used. You've got to kind of clean the pipes out. So if you had a dog that hasn't been used in, in months and you know you need to use him, go get some practice rounds a couple of times, 10 days before you need to use them because that can make a big difference. Okay, so got a low sperm count. It's not because he's been frequently used and it's not because he been, hasn't been used much. So what's the problem? So, underdeveloped testicles, there's one answer. Only one testicle is descended, there's another answer. You don't want to breed dogs with a single testicle. Dogs that haven't dropped two testicles by the time they're six months old need to be, be uh, fixed because they have a higher chance of testicular cancer. It is a hereditary condition. Um, so you don't want to be using a dog with a single testicle, not just because of low sperm count, but because it's hereditary as well. And because that dog really needs to have both testicles removed so that it doesn't suffer from testicular cancer. Um, so, so then you've got low sperm count because it's a hereditary condition like a single testicle, small testicles, um, those can be problems. Um, you can have uh, dogs that have a slow, a, a low sperm count because they have an infection. So I've run into this situation before. You got a dog that, that this, the collection wasn't very good. You then go take the dog's temperature and you find it's got a temperature above 101.5. And that dog's got some kind of infection going on. That dog needs antibiotics. At least some diagnosis to what's going on at the very least antibiotics. And that can fix those problems in a lot of cases. So a dog that's not feeling well, that's got some low grade infection going on may have a low sperm count. That's completely fixable. Brucellosis, another cause for a low sperm count, and another reason that you absolutely do not want to use a dog that has brucellosis. So you should be testing any dogs that are going to be used as stud dogs, need to be tested routinely for brucellosis. Hmm? Uh, slope back down again. Um, you can do this yourself. We do sell brucellosis test kits. You do have to draw blood, you have to spin it, 
get the results about five minutes later. But I recommend that any dog that, uh, that is going to be used as a stud dog or any older dog that comes into your clan should be tested for brucellosis. It's a sexually transmitted disease. If a dog gets brucellosis, it will then produce um, failed litters, puppies that don't survive, uh, and it can ruin any dog that it comes in contact with in terms of being able to have puppies. The problem with brucellosis is you're not very likely going to know the dog has brucellosis. It's not particularly common, but you do not want any part of it. So we test all of our dogs. I'd recommend that if you've got dogs that you're bringing into your clan that are older dogs, or if you're going to do ins inseminations with another outside dog, that you make sure that dog has had a brucellosis test at least six months ago. Um, hypothyroidism. Dogs can have low thyroid count and that can cause um, a, a, a reduction in sperm count. So that's fairly easy to diagnose. A blood test and a, and a thyroid panel will show that. So you look for the TSH levels. And if the TSH levels are high, it means the dog's trying to produce thyroid and not able to do it. And so there's treatments for that. You can give a synthetic thyroids to, to, to fix that problem. Um, uh, retrograde ejaculation. So this is where a dog doing all the things that you want to do, but it doesn't produce any sperm. And what's happened is, is there's a problem with the valving in his penis that has ended up with him ejaculating into his bladder. Won't cause him any problems, but it means you won't be able to pull from the dog. And you can fix retrograde ejaculation. Um, it does require some surgery to do it. And you diagnose that by, if you try to collect from a dog, the dog humped away but didn't produce anything, you then go check his semen and look for a semen, for, excuse me, look at his urine, and he look for semen in his urine. If you see it, that's a retrograde ejaculation. That's fixable. Temperatures too high or too low, specifically high temperatures, will kill semen. So, you know, the reason that testicles hang down from a dog is they don't want to be at body temperature. They want to be cooler than that. And, you know, you hear this, uh, this thing about, uh, you know, people going on vacation and they've got, you know, on their honeymoon, and they've got tight sewing trucks on and they hold the curls and goopers up close to the body and they can't get they can't they can't have babies you want to keep your studs cool you, you want to let them hang low conditioning hang low and swing low right? let those let those suckers cool off so you know obviously you don't got you've got well i mean if you've got a dog that you've got a, a belly band on the dog so it, everything's being held up in place and then you want to use them as a stud dog that might cause a reason for having poor semen quality so just be aware of that um, and then the last thing that, that is a, a serotoli se a, a sertoli cell tumor in the testicle uh, that is a cancer of the testicle that will produce um, uh, est high, estrogen le high estrogen levels that will stop the dog from producing sperm. And it actually ends up feminizing a dog. A dog that's got that kind of a tumor typically will start to develop um, you know, boobs up on its front of its chest. Um, so that you can test for. And I mean, you know, in those situations, probably that dog's probably not gonna be used as a stud dog, but at least you've found the cause of the problem. Golly, that's 18 minutes for you to re Anything else you think you wanna to add to that, Tammy? No. No? Okay. Everybody got to see the video of our new announcement of our great grandbaby, and it's a little boy. So oh, I, didn't put it on you, I didn't put it on YouTube. Oh, you didn't put it on YouTube? Okay. No. Do you, I'll put do it you on want me to? Facebook. No, yeah. that's okay. Yeah, I don't think it's really yeah. YouTube material. Callahan Wade is going to be Our next first day. great grandbaby. <laughs> going to be born in February the 26th. Boy, do we and a boy. look and sound old. <laughs> and we've got, we've got lots of grandkids, but they're all girls. So we're excited. Except Not, for one. Yeah, 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 that's right, yeah. Jayton, that's right, Jayton's going to college, so, now, Jay, so. Jay, yeah, Jayton's <laughs> off to college, so, you know, he's, 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 yeah. he's 19 or pushing that age, so. But this is our first great grandbaby. Yeah, so we're pretty excited about that, we found out about that two days ago, yeah. so anyway, we'll just end up the video by talking about grandkids, yeah, pretty exciting yeah. stuff. Okay, so. so check as, with me at the end of November and I can tell you what puppies we may be having up and coming, probably okay. fluffy carriers, but okay. I'm not going to tell the rest. It's a oh, secret. It's a secret. All right. As usual, thanks for watching. Bye, buddy. Bye. Thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. 
there's nothing implied here and certainly this should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye.